Grand Rising to the Collective. Man, I know we back with another banger, another reaction. I appreciate everybody who been tapping in, running up, and subbing up. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop them uploads. Y'all know we coming with about four videos a week, man. And this is for entertainment purposes as well. And when you like and comment and subscribe to the channel, helps Collective grow, helps Collective get bigger, helps more people who like this type of content. Tap in with this content. Don't get into the winners for the giveaway, man. First giveaway winner. I would like to say it's OJ Zus 5005. That's the first winner. Second winner goes out to Michael Turner 80. All y'all gotta do, man, hit me up on Instagram, DM me, send me your email, I got you. That's all you gotta do. DM me on Instagram, I'll go ahead and reach out and do the rest, and you'll receive your gift. But, again, collect it. Did win this giveaway, bro? Trust me. We gonna start just dropping giveaways randomly. Like sometimes on rant on videos, I'ma just hop on and be like, "Hey, today a giveaway. I'ma tell y'all what to do," and then that's when that's how y'all gonna do it. But it's gonna be more giveaways, so I apologize to those who didn't win. We are gonna spread the wealth. Everybody gonna get a chance. But again, shout out to the collective. I hope y'all having a smooth seven. If you ain't subbed up and you ain't a part of the collective, I wish you a smooth seven as well. But I ain't gonna hold you, man. Let's get straight to the. Video, man, let's go. Well, guys, this is a male ostrich. What's the benefit from that good sense of sight? Mm. That's crazy, it's snowing in Africa, though. Damn. And I wanted to go ahead and ask y'all to get collected. If you've been subbed up since a minute, I'm talking about like day one, y'all remember seeing in the first couple clips the fire in the air? That's a dragon, bro. Hey, I know y'all remember that, bro. Because I remember I was like, when I was watching it, I remember I said something about it. The comments went crazy. Everybody was like, bro, that's real. That was in China. This and it. Y'all was lacing me up. Shout out to the collective. I remember that, bro. I remember that was when the channel really started getting rocking. If y'all remember, and if y'all was here, y'all will remember that clip. I just had to bring it back because y'all know we got bigger. So I had to go ahead and show that to the people who made who the people who knew the new new people who are part of the collective or people who haven't subbed up yet that image might be foreign to them so i'm a, i'm bringing that one back man it came across the desk it was sent to me again and, and somebody in the collective said look we getting bigger so i think sometimes we should go ahead and post some of the big clips we should give that knowledge to them the new people so so we so so that we all moving together as one y'all let me know if i'm tripping but yeah, somebody in the comments, a part of the collective, sent that to me. Was like, yeah, yeah, man, bring this one back, bro. Because if we talking about the Leviathan, if we talking about all these little things in the water, you need to bring that one back. Cause some people don't believe it. So I was like, all right, let me, let me go ahead and bring that one back. But let me know how y'all feeling. If the videos getting off to a bang, y'all let me know, man. This is absolutely sickening. Papa tells us to hold the 
hold a knife and then he puts his big hand on, he puts you, pushes the, it into the neck, cuts it. And after, but when well, it's upside down, so it's like, he goes like I'm that. How does the baby become upside down? So you get a string, hang it up, and it's upside down when it's asleep. Well, hang the baby upside down after they inject it. Yes. Miss Margin is a nurse. She Miss Margin. Miss Margin is a nurse of our school. She does the injecting. She do, she pretends to be kind, kind to my mom and tries to like say be kind. And then after she just uh, she injects. She's a nurse, so she pretends to be kind to mom. And she just she so if me and gave, if I hurt myself, she pretends to be like really kind to us and like look after us and give us ice cream. She's a member of this group? Yes. She's a... And what do they all have? You say they all have a special something that they wear and stuff? Yes, they wear this, but they wear this uh, special kind of shoes. They make her... What shoes? What shoes? Shoes, kind of shoes? Baby skin shoes. Daniel, Felix and Max. Who are Daniel, Felix and Max? They work at a shoe shop. Daniel and maker. Felix, yes. What shoe shops do they work at? Daniel and Felix, they work in the, the, next to the O2 Centre one in this, in this tube station. Where? Just inside the tube station. So the tube station where? What tube station, Daniel? O2 Centre one. O2 Centre where? Mm. So in the corner. In tube station. I think it's the next waitress, I didn't come to it. Finchley Road Station. Oh, the tube station? Yes, yes. So when you come in, there's this shop, okay, the um, shoe shop. So tell me what they do, these fellows. And those fellows, they take off the skin. I don't know how. The I don't... skin of whom? Of oh, the baby. The baby. And they make shoes? Yes. And who wears these shoes? Papa. Everyone wears the shoes. Everyone in the car. Do y'all believe her? Kids don't lie. Paranormal activity at the supermarket. Imagine catching a shapeshifter on your doorbell camera. I'm up at 2 a.m. scrolling TikTok as one does on a garden gummy when I come across this video. Now, mind you, this video has almost 400 likes, but it had been up for like three, three days. Now, I can't say for sure if this is a shapeshifter, but you're going to have to watch it and let me know what you think. I've never seen anything like this myself personally. If y'all missed it, watch his shadow. I'm going to slow it down. Now that video is still up on her page if you want to go see it for yourself. What do y'all think? I've never seen a shadow move like that. I couldn't see. Am I tripping? Or did y'all see it too? I couldn't see. I don't know. I mean, I think she said they was gonna zoom it in. They didn't zoom in enough, bro. I need I need I need a little bit more. I need to see a little bit more. But the clip before that with the girl, the little girl talking, there's man. Drunk people and babies, they don't lie too often. That's that's why it's like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm 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 leaning towards I believe her. Am I tripping? Am I reaching? But baby skin though. What? And the dude keep the dude that's interviewing her, asking all those questions. I think he need to just ask her one question and let her answer it. And he's asking, he's asking more, he's asking more, he's asking more. But the way he's doing it, he's cutting her off. And she might be about to like drop some gems on us if he just stopped coming back to back with so many questions. I mean, that's my opinion. That's how I saw it. Let me know what y'all feeling. Elizabeth, 
do you feel about that? See if she says anything. <laughs> something there. Do you think they'd upset her? Do you think she'd upset? Let us know below. Dizzy Lizzy. I don't know why people go playing with shit like that. Hey friends, Jordan here down at the beach on 38 where I live and just wanted to address some of these wild conspiracy theories and comments on my last video where I flew my drone out and I was just looking at the sharks following them around like I do sometimes. And um, this happened on the heels of the very bad shark attack that we had here. So I went and looked, the video has like a million views and I, I was looking at some of the comments and um, people were just like losing their mind and arguing and everything. So they're like, all right, let's talk about this, okay? So if you don't know, um, I'm on a place uh, called 30A, beautiful beaches here in Florida. We're in the Gulf in the Panhandle up north. And um, the other day, there was a very bad day where uh, it looked like one shark probably, might have been two, but one shark probably mauled three different people. Um, one 45-year-old woman's in critical condition, and this poor 15-year-old girl named Lulu lost her uh, arm and leg or hand and leg. Very, very bad, very tragic. And then another girl got bit too, um, but she'll be okay, it seems. So that's extremely rare. So everybody has an opinion on why the sharks are attacking people. Um, so I think the important thing to do is let's look at the facts and let's ask the experts, all right? So the the, the theories <laughs> that are going around are just wild people talking about sun simulator that that sun in the sky is not real it's a simulator and that it's throwing everything off and the magnetic pull flip and all this stuff and hey i love a good conspiracy theory but there's zero evidence that any of that has anything to do with this um i've heard people talk about microplastics in the water and it's pissing the sharks off and they're you know, Mother Gaia is telling them to come attack us and stuff like that. Just wild. Um, I've seen people talking about we've overfished all the fish out of the ocean so the sharks don't have any food, so now they're eating us. It makes no sense at all. Um, I've seen, you know, people talking about, okay, the water temperature um, is a little bit higher than normal, so that's driving them inland. Well, they show all these maps of the water temperature being like in the 90s and record heat and all that. That's down in South Florida, around Miami and stuff. Um, we're way up north. It was 81.5 in the water today. felt amazing. It was actually kind of cool this morning. So um, our water's right where it should be. Um, if you ask a charter fisherman, they'll say the fish are the same they've always been. What they say it is. Oh, yeah, then also the orcas. Um, evidently, there was a pod of orcas that was filmed 75 miles off of the coast of Destin. Um, they asked the director of shark research in Florida if that had anything to do with these attacks, and he said absolutely not. So the guy who probably knows more about sharks than anybody in the state said that orcas had nothing to do with this attack, okay? So let's trust him. Don't trust me. Now, as far as, like, what the problem is, okay? When you ask the actual charter fisherman here, I got a good friend that has a charter fisher boat, Steluna. His name's Judah, and he said that the shark population right now is extremely... Um, large <laughs> that they they put a ban on harvesting and that it's, it's out of balance there's too many sharks here and that it's also migration season and it's mating season so they get extra aggressive when they're mating and when there's migration season they get closer to shore so that's all it is it's we have too many sharks here and then it's june so there's a crap ton of people here it's florida in june so there's a lot of people at the beach and when you have a lot of people in the water at one time and you have an overabundance of sharks at the same time there's problems. I mean, sharks are aggressive, especially the sharks we have here, bull sharks and tiger sharks especially, but mainly these bull sharks are very aggressive. Judah was saying that there was one that was attacking his charter boat the other day, and it was biting the side of it, and he could hear it biting through the fiberglass. It was attacking his boat. So they also say whenever they do fish and they, they pull up a shark, that a lot of times they have shark bites on the sharks themselves because they get real aggressive when they're mating. So the sharks are just kind of, they're right now they're very feisty. They're mating, they're migrating, there's a whole bunch of them. And, um, you know, they're territorial, they're, they're fighting over fish, they're fighting over everything, and, you know, they're sharks, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're, they're not exactly known for their um, docile behavior. So according to the experts, it had nothing to do with the orcas, it doesn't have anything to do with the water temperature, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that there's greed on 30A and the bad vibes went into the ocean, um, Gaia isn't sending the sharks to kill humans, um, it's none of that stuff, man. It is the fact that we put a ban on harvesting, so there's too many sharks. These uh, lifelong fishermen here said that 
um, this is the most sharks they've ever seen in their life. We have so people talk about the declining shark population in the world. Well, not here. We have more sharks than ever before. This guy says he's been fishing 45 years and he's never seen this many sharks ever. So there's more sharks here than ever before. And right now is mating season, it's migration season. So you have a lot of sharks. They're very aggressive right now. And then it's June, so the water's just full of people. It sounds like a bad recipe to me, but don't be like spinning up all these wild conspiracy theories because this is just nature, man. This is just nature. Sometimes this shit happens. It's sad. Um, my heart goes out to the victims because that is very, very rare. They're just enjoying their day down here at the beach like we all do. And um, But, you know, you have to respect the ocean. You have to know that when you go in there, you're rolling the dice. I mean, this this their, their world. You know, humans have been around for 150,000 years. These sharks have been there for you know, millions and millions, hundreds of millions of years. These are basically dinosaurs. So it's their world, you know? So um, just respect it when you're in that water. Um, they've always been here, they'll always be here. It's not weird at all. My Florida people, see cap me, see on point. Like, you got that chain on, nigga. Like when you ain't have no money, did you really want a chain? Nigga? Do you really like diamonds like that or you just need that shit? That shit ain't cheap. When you ain't have it, you was like, nigga, ain't no way I spend that on a chain. Right. Now you don't even think twice about that shit. Right. Do you need it or do you want it? There's something in you as a black man that made you like that gold and them diamonds. You don't even know why. Mm -hmm. African history would say... I'm not talking hey, about hey, no hey, history. Hey, hey, hey. I'm okay. talking about your personal My preference. My personal preference. Well, I'm attracted to it. You don't even know why, though. Think about it, what it really, really is, bro. Gold is an element, that's natural. It hit different when you got that shit. Right. It charge you up, so you get some kind of, it's an exchange. It's something that you get from winning. Right. It give you a positive charge. That shit make you think better. Same way you could put on a copper. It could be, you don't even have to do that. It could be copper and you might feel 10 times better, bro. Right. Seen that shit with them old people. They, Grandma, why you got that bracelet on? Baby, if I take this bracelet off. <laughs> I looked it up and it was like the diamonds are like good for uh, depression and anxiety. It makes you not have stuff like that. But why? Because I know somebody going to be like, but some people get it to impress others. That is very true. Did I look at it from it charge you up? I didn't look at it from that. I didn't. I didn't. I really didn't. But I just told my sister, cause me personally, I always had jewelry. When I was younger, I was a little bit more flashy. I, when I, I started to grow up, I started noticing the flashiness bring unwanted attention. But I did tell my sister, I had came to a dilemma. I was like, look, I wanna give me a chain. I wanna give me something nice. I'm talking about something nice. But I was like, I ain't wearing it outside though. And I ain't gotta wear it in the in the videos or nothing like that. I could be editing a video. I could be playing 2K. I could be chilling in the house watching Power. As long as I have it on, it feels good to me. But that's the difference between some people who wearing it for other people, proving something, and then that's something that's somebody else who likes it because they like it. But I was raised to know my whys. So whenever I make a decision, I need to know why I did that so I don't get lost in the decision when I make the decision or if it was a bad choice I know why I made the decision so I know why I live why I could live with it and that's how I looked at it with that but then I sat back and I said but be logical here don't just get that because you can why don't you go invest in some land or something get back or something and that's when I started reassessing my thoughts so if I ever do get a chain, y'all won't know. Cause I'm a rocket myself. It's gonna, I'm rocking it in the house. It's gonna feel good to me. I, it's, it's, a, it's an accomplishment to me. But before I do that, I'm gonna do some other things, more important things. I'm gonna handle them priorities first. And that's my message to the homies who are watching this. If you feel like that, bro, if you can, do whatever it is you please. I'm not trying to control it. But if you can go handle business and knock out another priority that can set your family tree straight for the next 10 years handle that first because then you can go buy 10 20 different chains if you wanted to but don't do it because you're trying to prove something to somebody don't get uh pnb rocked bro don't 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 go the route it ain't that serious over a chain somebody gonna try to take it you know you know what i mean or get you a fake one who cares now nah, i'm just playing i'm just saying like 
Don't crash out. Handle priorities first. Think, think what you can do now to set yourself up later down the line. Oh, I know. I can't wait for, for him to get it. Yeah. This carpet was like, gold. Like, the yeah. one that you think it'll like fit in with a dark carpet. Like, maybe, you know, put some of this in there. Okay. Did you already put the cards in here? No, they're right there. Okay. Did you want to put the cards in there? Yeah. And I got his address around here somewhere. Okay. Oh, we forgot the candy. Oh, no, oh, yeah, don't forget the candy. The address is like, I have it on a little piece of paper right here. I know I got a picture of it on my cell phone, too. Okay. Well, everything else fits nicely. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. put one more piece on top. Yeah. This one. Right here. Yeah, make it like all nice and thick. Yeah. That is really going to like this. Oh, no. What's going on? Oh, man. All right, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Mom. Come on, Mom. Come on, Mom. Yeah, they got a spirit of poltergeist something. The mama was screaming. Look at this tree. It kind of looks like it's walking away on its own. So someone sent me this video of a potential skinwalker in the woods and wait till you see this next part because it's so much worse. Watch this tree right in the middle. Watch, wait for it. Like, it looks like it's just walking away, away. So here's the full video. Um, if you saw the story, you know, last night I saw something in the house that as crazy as it sounds, to me looked like a vampire. I'm just gonna show you the video. Here we go. Okay, try it again. I'm hearing sounds up here, like somebody's moving around. This stuff's been happening, but as soon as I pull my phone out, everything stops. I don't know. It, I don't know. I swear I heard somebody up here. Holy shit, I don't know what happened. That that thing vanished and my camera stopped recording immediately at the same time, um, I, 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 it, it's gone. Here's a slowed down version of what you saw, uh, brightened and close up. I'm gonna post a still, I'm not sure how well you can see it. It turned like an old man to the door, lurched forward and vanished. Honestly at a loss for what to do from here, but I'll keep you guys updated. Cap or fag? Cap or fag? Y'all see what was on TV. Y'all remember watching them clips about that? This, this is, is why you shouldn't should wake up a sleepwalker. A group of siblings were staying the night at their grandma's when they're woken up to the shilling sounds of their grandmother frantically laughing in the dark. As they decide to check on her, this happens. 
um jeito nisso. Vai, fala então. She suddenly screamed, scared them all back to the rooms. Man, hell nah. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I mean, that could have been real. I mean, his reaction running back might have been real. I don't know. They all in different rooms, grown man or not. If grandma tripping like that, bro, all of us in one room. <laughs> we all in one room, bro. We probably going out the window next. We ain't gonna, hey, forget the front door. I ain't got time to play with grandma, bro. I'm calling mom's like, mom, you better come get your mama. You better come get your mama, mom, because I ain't dealing with it. That was your mama before it was my grandmother, and I don't want no parts of it. It's time to go. It's time to go, bro. Hey, what y'all doing? Let me know, collective. For me, like I said, me and the siblings, we, me and my, I know me and my sister ain't playing with it. Where my grandfather at? You better come get your wife. Where my uncle or my aunt or my mama at? Y'all better come get y'all moms, because I don't want no parts of her. Y'all might know why she acting like this. She might have done it before. I don't know. I don't want no parts. It's time to go. <laughs> it's time to go. Pray for grandma, bro. Pray for your grandma. And but wait, they all splitting up though. They going to different rooms. Nah, nah. Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way. That's what made me think it might be a little bit fake. But if it is fake, y'all let me know. This freaky piece of footage was sent to us by viewer Dallas DH. It was captured in Millingimby in the Northern Territory of Australia. The three boys thought they were posing for a photo, but the camera holder was playing a trick and actually recording a little bit of video. However, they inadvertently captured something rather unusual. Watch. <laughs> Watching that again, in the background, a strange dark figure can be seen. The boys yell and scream, and then the clip abruptly ends. So what do you think's been caught on camera here? Love to hear your thoughts on this strange sighting in the comments down below. Watch it show itself to us, all filming at 1 a.m. To make this film because there's a couple things that I wanted to be talking about, right, honey? Yeah. So my wife obviously she didn't want to participate due to the fact that um, there has been a um, couple comments towards her, and um, uh, she said she rather stays away from. Um, what's been going on so the thing to all this is that um, there has been a couple problems in like criticizing between you know my family and <gasps> what what the f you want Babe, what something, something's back there something's back where in the kitchen what the f you want baby what do you mean there's something in the kitchen. Baby, don't f scare me like that. What the f are you doing? What do you mean? I don't know what the fuck that was. What's over there? Huh? What's over there? Baby. What's over there, honey? Baby, I don't want to be in here. There's. What's over there? Oh, f you gotta be kidding me, huh? Oh my god. Let's go to the room. Let's go to the room. Now that gotta be a real ass reaction. <laughs> okay, this is an insanely wild conspiracy theory, but stick with me. There's an 1888 book by Ingersoll Lockwood called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey. Long story short, the book is about a boy named Baron, none other than someone named Don. They go to Russia and they find a portal. So now the same author, Ingersoll Lockwood, writes another book about three years later called The Last President. And when you know it, this book is about a wealthy man who lives on Fifth Avenue in none other than New York City. 
So this man from Fifth Avenue decides to run for president and he wins the election that nobody had him winning. After he's inaugurated, then what happens is he elects a cabinet member that goes by the name Pence. So now let's fast forward a little bit. You have Nikola Tesla, who's claimed to have discovered time travel. He dies in 1943. Um, after his death, there's like 80 trunks of his life's work. Um, and who would you think is going to get those? Donald Trump's uncle. Now, after Donald Trump's uncle died, some people say that now Donald Trump has Nikola Tesla's work. So let's tie it all together. Here's the theory. Donald Trump uses a time machine to go into the future and sees that in 2016, Hillary Clinton won the election and America just goes to shit. So he travels back from the future, runs for president, and wins to prevent Hillary Clinton from becoming the president. Uh, only on TikTok. This world is much older than we think. There, there are histories and civilizations that once exist on this world that absolutely do not exist anymore, and there is absolutely no trace of them. And we are definitely going to talk about this here because a lot of people don't understand where I'm coming from when I'm talking about these weird stories. So with that being said, hey, yo, peace, peace. It's your man, L. George, man, coming right back at you with some of that real talk, real vibe. And, man, and if you do, man, if you, if you have to, if, if you have it in you, please hit like, share, and subscribe. It helps your boy out, man. And make those comments, man. I, you text me, man, I'm going to text you back. That's how that works. But, yeah, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of unknown things in this world, man, because society comes to an end and the things, and when the new people come and they find the old stuff in the society and they want to claim themselves as the new kings and the new rulers, they tear down a lot of the old stuff and they get rid of the things that they've seen and the stuff that they know about and they replace themselves, you know what I'm saying, into, they write themselves into the story. And that's what happened here on this doggone planet. <clears throat> Certain civilizations came to an end. Let me take you to the beginning of this here. This is what really goes on on this planet. <coughs> when this planet is getting ready, when some catastrophe is getting ready to happen to this planet, there are often people who are in the know and there are people who are not in the know, just like today. There's a doggone uh, asteroid heading to this doggone planet and some people know about it, some people don't. But the people who are in the know, they often go down to these doggone caverns. They go to a safe place up under the earth. This is why you always hear in our day and age, we hear people talking about building bunkers. Now, when these people go down up to their safe place behind it, behind the uh, uh, waterfalls and down in the caverns up under the world or their own man-made bunkers, Whenever people go down into these places, they take their technology, they take their book, and they take the, most of the artwork down there with them. You have seen this before in movies, like that movie 2012, I believe, when uh, when the, the world was getting ready to get hit by a meteor or was going to flood some kind of way, and they had to take all the artwork and everything, all the Constitution, all, so they took all that stuff and put it in a safe place and took it with them. This occurs frequently. However, whenever the people come back up out of the caverns and after and after the uh, whatever the catastrophe is over with, whether it be nuclear, whether it be something by nature, whether it be the sun, whenever it's over with, the people in those caverns, they come back up. Now, when they come back up, it doesn't kill everybody out here. You have survivors. And usually the survivors, being that they no longer have access to the books, and sometimes they forget how to read and they forget how to work certain inventions, so they start to digress. That's the best way I could say it, you know what I'm saying? They start to go backwards. They, they devolve the people who are on the surface. Some of the people on the surface, they devolve. <laughs> but others, others evolve, you know what I'm saying? They still keep the ability to read and write. And they still know how to work some of the uh, mechanisms that, or some of the inventions that were still left on the surface. But when these people come out, they find all the people who don't really have the, the knowledge. And then they start spoon feeding them a little bit of knowledge at a time. Now, uh, oh, here's a train. 
uh, uh, here's plow, uh, here's electricity. You know what I'm saying? They, they just feed the people all over again with the same manner. So they're giving the people the same technology and the same knowledge that they had in the last world. Now, also, sometimes, like I said, whenever we think of uh, intelligent life, we often think of people like us who look like us who was running things. But there are worlds where there were people who did not look like us. They looked very different from us. Some of them look like reptiles. Some of them look like talking cats. Some of them look like them things you call gargoyles. Some of them look like these dinosaur people. It was all kinds of different lifestyles. Some of them look like these little shaggies. You know what I'm saying? It was all kinds of different uh, civilizations before us. And the people who came out of the caverns, they would they have the information on these civilizations because some of those people went down there. Some of those beings went down there with them. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of those beings, they have intuition. They know when something is coming, so they knew how to go and hide any dog on with. But anyway, the people were like, they would come up to the surface, they would give you new technology, and then, oh, this is what I was getting ready to say. It's the people who come who come up out of the uh, come up out of the caverns, they would want to sometimes they would get to the point to where they want to consider themselves as the kings. So what they would do is they would take the carvings and stuff off of the buildings that were already there, the ones that they could still use. If they had, if it was a building up there that had too many gargoyles on it and had too many uh. uh draconian looking um, beings on it, they would take those things off and then they would carve other new ones and put their faces on there. And then they would, they would create a narrative and say that this was them in the past when it really wasn't them. It's kind of like how we do nowadays when we find places like uh, um, Ankle Watts, you know what I'm saying? When we find places like that and we go in there and we start excavating and we start seeing a new world and we start figuring out bits and pieces. And then we start putting those, those bits and pieces in our books. So then after this here happens, after whatever's going to happen happens to us, the people who come back out the caverns, they're going to be looking at it like, oh, well, here, this, these are some remains. Let's get rid of these remains because we don't want them, we don't want to activate them and make them remember who they are. So let's get rid of some of these remains. Let's put our faces on the picture. Let's write a new story and give them, give them our story. And then some of those people, man, believe me, you better believe this. Some of those beings in the past worlds, they had already had AI. Because, see, they used to have like an organic version of AI where they were dealing with the spirit. They didn't have to use a computer to tap into the energy wave that was out here. They, would, they had a way to, to speak to the so-called unalive people in spirit form. Because when you go onto the other realm, many of you have access to all of the different information out there. And they were using them to you to get uh, information. They were using them just like AI. But anyway, man, a lot of times, like I said, when I'm telling these weird stories, these are stories that are, that remain from certain times and time frames in existence. So, I mean, I mean that's pretty much it, man. Just stick with me with the stories I'm telling. I know some of the stuff is going to be weird, but man, look. Why not take your mind to other places? And like I said, man, get all the information that you can because somewhere down the line, you're going to see something on television, you're going to see something in a movie, and you're going to, or, or you're going to run into another content creator, and then you're going to be able to connect. Okay, let's talk about the cat people real fast. See how fast I can do this. You had the lion people, you had the cat people, you had dog people, and you had these things called shaggies that you call Bigfoot. All of these different beings, they once came, they, this is the story, that they came from the constellation right around Sirius A and uh, Canis Major. These hairy type beings, these animalistic type beings, they ended up here on this doggone planet and no telling how long it was here. They once had rulerships in their own kingdoms on this planet. Here's the thing. The cat-like people, the like the felines, like the domesticated cat there were beings who looked like that. And those beings used to hate those doggone reptilians. But but I told you the story about us and how we used to be um, so agreeable that we would allow people to just do whatever to us. They would allow, we allow people to unalive us. The domesticated, the domesticated cat 
was the same way. What we did was we mixed our bloodline with these reptilian type people so we could have a disagreeable nature within us. And those cat-like beings did the same thing because they were very passive. So they mixed their bloodline with these cat, these reptilian type beings or these snake-like people. That's who they really mixed their bloodline with. And when they mixed their bloodline with that, on a timeout. Not only did they mix their bloodline with snake people, but they mixed their bloodlines with humans too. There's a story of one called Panthera. I can't think of his full name, but there's one of the one of the he's part of the Jesus story. When they, when they talk about the uh, the Jesus that was born in a manger where animals are kept, that is the story of Pan the Panther version of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? It's, I'll get into that one day. I'll show you a video on it. But let's get back to this. Those cats, they mix with a doggone uh, snake-type being. And when they mix with that snake-type being to get that disagreeable energy within them so they could protect themselves, they also pick, took on the characters of their eyes. That's why when you look at a snake, when you look at a cat, if you notice, it has the eyes of a reptile. Right, it has the slits like this here. Now let me tell you something else about the cat. You, I mean, I hope y'all stuck around to the end because this is gonna make you laugh. If you, when, whenever you get a chance, go to YouTube and type in the cat cucumber prank, and you will see people take a cucumber, a green cucumber, right, and sneak it up on them cats. And then when the cat turns around and he sees that cucumber, he jumps and then there tries to run because the cucumber caught his ass off guard. Because they used to go to war with those doggone reptilians and it's with those snake people, and it's still in their doggone DNA. And the snake, the cat, has the most amazing reflexes. Its reflexes are faster than that of a doggone reptilian or that of a snake. All right, man, that's enough of this weird stuff, man. But I still got another day to go. I got to talk about some more stuff Friday, some more weird stuff. So. Peace and blessings, y'all. I'm out. OG was going for a minute. That was a little long clip. But I have seen the cats being pranked by cucumbers. I have seen that, and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, what? Why? As soon as they creep it up behind them and the cat jump and do all type of weird stuff, yeah. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but I have seen that. Is that, is that again, is that capper fact? I'm going to look a little deeper, but Rashad Jamal did talk about the cat people and the lion people. He did talk about them. He talked about draconians, too. We like to call us the snake people or reptiles. We, we, we've, we've seen those ones, of course. But the, light, the lion people and the cat people, we haven't really talked about them as much. But I do know Rashad Jamal brought them up before. So if y'all want me to start tapping into them type of videos, let me know. But y'all know we made it to the end of this video, man. And I know, I know some y'all don't really like that, but we had a fire ass, fire ass lineup today. We got some more coming. I'll make the videos longer for y'all. I got you. I appreciate y'all if y'all stuck all the way through. And if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit that bell so you always notified whenever we drop them uploads. Y'all know we coming with about four videos a week, man. And this is for entertainment purposes as well. And when you like and comment and subscribe to the channel, helps collective grow, helps collective get bigger, helps more people who like this type of content. Tap in with this content. But I ain't gonna hold you. I hope y'all having a smooth seven, bro. And until I see y'all in the next one, y'all know what it is. We gone. Hey, yeah. Just check my count, check, sheesh, at the amount.